You're listening to The Power Project. I'm your host, Brandy Voth. I also like to think that I'm your guide along this journey of purpose, which is where you will hopefully end up at the end of this podcast. I'm a mom, a wife, a daughter, a friend, an entrepreneur, an advocate in the fight against human trafficking. I wear a lot of hats, y'all, but don't we all? And most importantly, I am passionate about inspiring women to go out and lead purpose-filled lives while owning your God-given power. Without further ado, let's jump right in. Welcome back to The Power Project. I'm your host, Brandy, and I'm here today to chat with you about some more emotional roadblocks and some mindset that gets in our way along our journey of purpose in life. Now, oftentimes we hear about a fear of failure, and it's something that women like myself, people like myself that are achievers, that are constantly striving for that next goal, striving to accomplish that next feat, we often have a fear of failure. We are so driven by that fear of failure that we can either be paralyzed in it and not step out of that fear, or we can be driven by it and let it fuel us. And so for the majority of my life, as in, in my young life, I was driven by this fear of failure. I just constantly pushed myself and, and strived for perfection because I did not want to fail and I had this fear of failure until eventually one day I encountered failure for really the first time in my life. I had had a long string of successes in my life and Once I encountered that failure, I experienced something completely different than what I had known in the past, than what had driven me in the past. And it almost became a a fear of success because once I would begin something, once I would strive for something, once I would get close to succeeding, I would quit. And I didn't at the time understand what was going on or what was taking place. I just knew that when things got hard or I got overwhelmed, I quit. And looking back, I know it's because after succeeding, after having success, after having this, uh, putting yourself, your successes and your achievements on such a high platform that the failure felt even more devastating than the fear of failure itself. And so the fear became of success, of succeeding, because then once you're up so high, the harder you fall. And this is something that I see. So today I'm actually going to speak to maybe not the audience that I would normally speak to. Perhaps you are the audience that I would typically speak to, which would have a fear of failure. And that would be what drives you and motivates you every day. But I want to speak to that audience today that actually has a fear of success because this is a phenomenon all on its own that I see playing out in people's lives. And in the the volunteer nonprofit work that I do, I mentor women that have endured terrible trauma. They have been through crisis in their past. They have been through situations that that sometimes were a direct result of choices they made and other times were not. They were choices that other people had made from a very early age in their life. And most of these women have a, a criminal past or a past of trauma and abuse and there haven't been a lot of successes in their life. Some of them struggle to come up with one success that they've ever actually counted a success in life. And while I, I mentor them, I teach a class at an aftercare home. And we walk through a course of dealing with uh, setting them up for gainful employment, for a career path, for a vocational plan. But through that, There is a ton of mindset coaching and life coaching that goes into that because teaching a person to build a resume is one thing. Teaching a person to identify their skills and their talents and their gifts when they don't feel like they possess any of those is an entirely different process. And 
So we do a deep dive into what emotional roadblocks are holding them back and unpacking past hurt, letting go and relinquishing shame and guilt and taking responsibility for our own actions and owning our past, but standing in our present. This is one of the most rewarding, most beautiful processes that I get to watch people walk through, but it's also one of the most hardest on your soul to walk through with someone, to witness someone that has a lifetime of past and hurt and trauma and grief and have to walk them through that, but help them to stand in their present and own who they are today and take someone that only has an experience of failure and help them to start visualizing success. And oftentimes in this program, when we get to about the halfway mark, and this is, I've done four different groups of women in this course, and inevitably we reach the same halfway mark every single time with every single class. I can call it from day one. It's when We've unpacked our past and we've unpacked the actions and we've unpacked the hurt, the guilt, the shame, all of the pain from the past. We've unpacked it. And so now we're standing in the present. And now we're saying that today we're going to strive for success. Today we're going to have to take actions to change the entire cycle that we've walked through in our lives. Today, we're going to look to the future and not the past anymore. Today, we're going to look to where we're going and not where we came from. Today, we're going to stand in our truth and say that that is who I was, but this is who I am today, and this is who I'm striving to be tomorrow. This is the point that is a make or break point in the course. This is the point that I get to where they become overwhelmed. They start to have so much self-doubt, limited mindset sets in, they experience fear, this is where they start to crumble in the class. This is where the class goes from a business course to tearing down emotional roadblocks and getting really, really intentional and true with themselves. And this, unfortunately, has been the point that if they're going to leave the program, this is when they leave the program. It's not just this class. It's it's the place that they are in the program because this program is intended to go from past to present to future. So along with that, there's a lot of other things going on in their program where they're having to stand up and take responsibility and own their lives and say, I'm going to now take the steps to being a different person. I'm going to be the person that God has called me to be. I'm not going to fall back on fear. I'm not going to fall back on the familiarity of of the pain that I've been through. But instead, I'm going to press through the fear. And I'm going to step into the unknown, into the uncertain, into something that looks like nothing I've ever experienced before. Today, I'm going to strive for success. I'm going to try to accomplish goals. I'm going to say that, my behavior is completely changed from what it was before. And this is the hardest point of the course. It's not just in this course that I see this with people in general. This is the point where self-sabotage comes in. And this is the point where we as humans end up back on the hamster wheel. Maybe you are pursuing a business goal. Maybe you have a dream on your heart. Maybe you are looking to write a book. Maybe you're looking to launch a podcast. Maybe you're looking to have a relationship that goes deeper. But what you've experienced in the past has been a long list of failure or what you would deem as failures. And so to succeed seems really uncomfortable and unfamiliar for you. It seems like you are in foreign territory. You're on new soil. There is something entirely different expected from you. And the fear of what lies on the other side of success, of accomplishment, paralyzes you and holds you in that cycle of failure, in that cycle of giving up on your dreams, in that cycle of quitting, in that cycle of the hamster wheel. 
But what if just once, what if you could determine today that this is the day that you make up your mind to not fear success? What if this is the day that those four F's standing in the way of your victory fall to the wayside? What if we realize them? What if we acknowledge them? And what if we move past them? What if we move into the side of victory where we can stand and own it and claim it? There's, there's four F's that are reasons that we don't break free from the cycle of failure. And that first one is what we've been talking about here. It's the fear of success. It's because success doesn't feel comfortable. It's sort of like if you are really accustomed to wearing yoga pants and a messy bun and a sweatshirt during the winter, and you've gotten really cozy in your house because this is, this is what we sit in. And I'm not saying that yoga pants and a messy bun and a sweatshirt are failure, so don't get me wrong. You guys know that I love some loungewear. But what I am saying is that let's let's imagine that we're wearing our our failure. We're wearing it really comfortably like our favorite sweatshirt. This is what we do. We put it on and we wear it. And no one's asking us to put on the skinny jeans and the stilettos and do the hair and do the makeup and hold ourselves a little more proudly right? Because we're, we're not really certain. We haven't worn skinny jeans in a few months and we haven't worn our stilettos and we haven't done our hair and makeup. And we don't really think it's going to feel comfortable. We don't really think we're going to feel good about ourselves until one day someone comes along and says, Hey, I'd like you to be part of a glam day, a photo shoot, something that requires you, a date night, something that requires you to put on the skinny jeans, put on the heels, do your hair and makeup. And then even though it's not comfortable to you, even though it's not familiar to you, you know, and I know how great it feels to stand back and look in the mirror and realize how proud you feel of yourself at that moment. It's kind of the same with the success, and the failure. Because when we become overwhelmed, put it, take it into the clothing equation. Stick with me here. When we become overwhelmed, we tend to revert to familiar behaviors. So perhaps we're getting dressed for this special occasion that requires us to dress up fancy and get our hair and makeup done. But then we start thinking, oh, we're standing in our yoga pants. We have our messy bun on. We're in the closet and we're trying to decide, what do I wear? I'm not even certain like what shirt goes with these pants or if these pants work with these shoes or how to do my hair or how to do my lipstick or my brows. And when we become overwhelmed with that in life also, we revert to our familiar behaviors. How did we feel when we were overwhelmed before? What did we do? What did we revert to? We go back to what's comfortable. We go back to the yoga pants and the messy bun. We quit when we become overwhelmed in life. We run away. We lean on unhealthy coping mechanisms. Maybe the skinny jeans were a little tight. So instead of working out, we go get a bowl of popcorn and we sit down on the couch and we veg out with Netflix. So this is where we tend to fear the success. We fear what's on the other side of stepping out of that comfort zone. Also, one of the things in this fear of success that holds us back is what happened in the past when we attempted to succeed? What happened in the past when we strived for success? What happened when we tried to accomplish a goal? Did we fail? Okay, but at least we tried. So instead of getting paralyzed in not succeeding in the past, we have to continue to strive for success on the other side and not fall back into what's comfortable just because It's what we're used to. It's what we're accustomed to, which brings us to the fear of the unknown because the, the common quote, and I don't know who quoted it, but the devil that we know is better than the one that we don't. I've heard this oftentimes in my life. It always kind of confused me a bit because I don't want to hang out with any devil, but it's, it's that we know what failure feels like. We know what not succeeding feels like. 
We don't know what success feels like when we're stuck in this fear of success mindset. We don't know what accomplishment feels like. We don't know what it feels like to check a goal off, to stand there in our in our pride and in knowing that we've done what we've been called to do here. And oftentimes you hear the scripture quoted, Jeremiah 29 and 11, for I know the plans that I have for you, plans to prosper you, plan for hope and a future, not for evil. I'm not quoting it verbatim. What we don't always realize is that before this this scripture of hope was given, there was exile that they had to walk through. There were tribulations. There were trials they had been walking through. Just like the failure we've walked through in the past. And, and there's this scripture of hope given. This word of hope. That God knows the plans that he has for you. Plans for welfare and not for evil. To give you a future and a hope. He knows these plans. We don't know these plans. And so oftentimes we rely on our own fear of the unknown rather than what he has told us here. It becomes more comfortable to believe in the past hurt that we know than the hope of the future because it's hard to imagine something that we've never seen before. It doesn't mean it's going to be easy, right? When, when, we've, when we're given that hope statement, it doesn't mean it's going to be easy. The scripture doesn't even mean it's going to be easy. It just means that when we're standing in our trials and our tribulations, we have to be able to be resilient and persistent and trust God's plan, that he has plans for hope, that we must persevere. But we have to get over the fear of the unknown in order to be able to step into what those plans are. And this is one of the biggest things that I have to sit with my mentees. Just because we haven't experienced it before doesn't mean that we have to fear it. Just because we may not have succeeded in life up until now does not mean that we have to stay stuck in that place of failure on that hamster wheel. Hey guys, it's Maddie, Brandy's assistant. I wanted to tell you about the newest venture of The Power Project. Have you heard about The Power Hat Co.? While teaching business to traffic survivors, Brandy realized the need for gainful employment that would attach mentees to purpose and provide entrepreneurial mentorship along the way. Combine that with her love of hats and The Power Hat Co. was born. You're going to love these beautifully custom crafted hats. The Ambassador Collection is available for pre-sale now. These structured felt hats are wrapped with a hand-woven ecot bandana topped with a custom feather and have a leather band with your power word of choice that has been hand-stamped by traffic survivors in an aftercare facility. With an Ambassador hat, you not only have a uniquely crafted symbol of power right on your head, but you can also wear it confidently knowing that each purchase supports the fight against human trafficking. Check out these hats with a powerful purpose at thepowerhatco.com. And then the third F that we're going to move past here is the fear of new identity. And this is so common. This is, I see people do this with using their personality types as a crutch. I see this as people using their strengths as a crutch as their their traumas as a crutch, their victimhood as a crutch, their failures as a crutch. Because when we accept failure as our identity, we forget who made us and who created us. When we accept failure as our identity, oftentimes people that have failed in life, made poor choices, whether it is in business, in relationships, in life in general, people that have exhibited bad behaviors, This becomes part of their identity. And I know that raising children, let's put it in the parenting paradigm. Raising children, I was always told by my mom, don't call them anything that you don't want them to grow up to be because they're going to accept it as their identity. So if I had a very strong-willed child, if I said, oh, he's a mess, he's, he's going to accept that as an identity. If I say he's going to be a leader, he accepts that as an identity. I say, oh my God, he's so terrible. He accepts that as an identity. If I say he challenges me daily, then he doesn't take that on as his identity. So it's 
oftentimes people that have made a, a, a string of these failures or these poor decisions almost wear that as a badge. They, they take this on as their identity and it becomes really easy to not have to break the cycle. It becomes really easy where they are just that person. They are the person who fails in business, the person who fails in relationships, the person who gossips too much, the person who can't manage their money, the person who has bad credit, the person who overeats, the person who drinks too much. Whatever it is here, people tend to fear the success because of this. They know that with success comes a new identity, becoming a new person, and they can't wear that badge. Like, have you ever heard someone say, oh, that's just John. He he gripes all the time. Oh, that's just Bob. He's horrible with money. Oh, that's just Susie. She runs her mouth. And so these are the things that hold us back from that success. These are the things that hold us in that failure cycle on that hamster wheel because we wear that as an identity. We wear it as a badge. And Colossians 3 and 9 through 10 says that you have put off the old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge after the image of its creator. So that excuse that's just the way they are, no longer applies. The person that is stepping into success and stepping out of failure has a new name. The name doesn't look like failure anymore. The name looks like victory and success and accomplishments. And the fourth F along this journey is the fear of accountability. This one, this one holds more people stuck than any of the other ones. This one is even, I believe, greater than the overall umbrella of fear of success. Because when we transition from this failure mindset into this success mindset, we have to begin to take responsibility for our actions and we have to make changes. Just like that identity of labeling people as being this, that, or the other, Now we have a new name. Now we're standing strong in the image of our creator. And now we're held to a higher standard. Now we're going to be held accountable because when we're a failure, no one counts on us for anything. When we're a failure, no one expects us to do more. They expect us to do the status quo or below. But now that we've stepped into the success shift, we're over here in the success mindset. Now we're held accountable. We are held to a higher standard and that will paralyze people. It's way easier to sit on the couch in the yoga pants and messy bun and eat the popcorn than it is to be held accountable. And 1 Corinthians 13 and 11 backs us up on this one. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I gave up childish ways. This is the acknowledgement that I see my mentees walk through the acknowledgement of I can no longer do the same things that I did before. It's easier to just go back to doing the same things that I did before. This is the point where I had a girl tell me one day that while she was striving to make strides and changes in her life and she was striving to complete this course and get a job and do college training and All of a sudden, it had become a little difficult because people had expectations of her and she was a new person and she was looking at victory rather than failure. This is the point where she says, it would be way easier for me just to go sell some drugs for a couple of hours and make more money than I'm going to make doing anything else. But she knew there was the accountability factor there. Thankfully, thankfully, She stepped through that fear of accountability and she stepped into taking the actions to succeed and she did succeed and it was the greatest feeling to watch her complete the course and the program. So what are some ways that we can implement steps to move from failure into success and overcome those four F's? The first is going to be that you have to take accountability of your actions. 
You have to recognize your right or your wrong choices that have led you to where you are today. You have to own them without absorbing the guilt and the shame. This is where you have to overcome those emotional roadblocks that are standing in your way. Because otherwise, the guilt that you experience, the shame that you experience from your past failures, from your past experiences, they're going to hold you. They're going to keep you on the hamster wheel. And you're just going to keep doing the same thing over and over, expecting different results. And we all know that is the definition of insanity. So recognize these these obstacles as what they are. They're obstacles that were along the way. They don't identify you. And then stand true in your present, knowing that that is who you were. That's not who you are today. Secondly, you need to recognize a time in your past that you were able to turn an obstacle into an opportunity or a failure into a success. And maybe this looks like I I failed at business before, but because of that, I learned this. I failed at that relationship, but because of that failure, I was able to be more understanding in my next relationship. I was able to listen more. Maybe it looks like I lost a ton of money in business, but because of that, I learned how to better appoint people to manage money in business. This is any type of obstacle along your past where you have turned it into a success. I can give you a long list of failures in business, in marriage, in parenting, in relationships, in my walk with God. I can give you an entire list of failures in life that have been turned into successes. So we're going to recognize those obstacles and we're going to recognize those failures, but then we're also going to see how we were able to turn them into successes. And maybe this takes a moment to sit in. Maybe this takes you thinking really intentionally about how those different failures led to success. Maybe it looks like those failures led you to today when you are listening to this podcast, when you are watching this video, and when you are right now having an aha moment that you have a a fear of success and you've been more comfortable sitting in failure versus claiming your victory. Maybe that is it right now. The third thing you're going to do is identify a time that you stepped through fear. And we're going to celebrate that moment as a victory. So for instance, the mentees that I have in the program, these mentees in this program, they're thousands of miles away from their family and they have had to take the steps to completely change their life, to take accountability, to own their actions, to step into their new identity, to step out of fear and into failure. This is where they can celebrate that moment as a victory. Even if they haven't completed their business course, even if they haven't graduated their program, they've stepped out of fear. So People, women in business, people in business, when did you step out of fear? When did you take a chance on a new business? When did you step out of fear and and start a new relationship? When did you step out of fear and start running again? When did you step out of fear and decide to make healthy choices? You stepped out of fear and wrote a book or you launched a podcast. Celebrate that as a victory, even if, even if the relationship failed, the business failed, the podcast failed, the book failed, you quit the program. Recognize that moment that you took a step out of fear. Recognize that moment as a victory and celebrate it because we don't celebrate our wins. We don't celebrate celebrate what we would not consider a huge success. And fourth, you're going to remember a moment of power, like a sense of accomplishment. Sometime in your life that you accomplished one thing that made you feel really great. Maybe it was a time that you gave birth. Maybe it was a time that you completed a a diet and lost weight. Maybe it was a time that you completed a program. Maybe it was a time that you got your, you graduated college or you got your GED or you completed an online course that you signed up for and you didn't give up on it. Or you finished a year worth of journaling or Bible studying, whatever it is, Take that sense of accomplishment, that one moment, one, I want you to hone in on one, the one that you can think in your mind that you feel the most sense of accomplishment in and the most pride for. And hold on to that as your moment of power. What did that feel like? 
How much joy was in your heart? Who told you that you couldn't do it? How did it feel to prove them wrong? Own that moment of power and hold on to that. Every single time that you start thinking that you're afraid to strive for success, every single time, go back to that moment. Remember that moment. That's your power moment. Maybe you ran a marathon. Maybe you learned something that someone didn't expect you to be able to learn. Whatever it is, that's your moment of power. Now, the fifth step of this is that I want you to imagine what it will feel like when you accomplish this hard thing. I want you to close your eyes and I want you to imagine that you are standing on the other side of this one thing that you have to accomplish. So for my mentees at this point, I walk them through standing on the stage at graduation and What are they wearing? How is their hair fixed? Who is in the audience? What friends and family members are there with them? How proud do they feel after they've accomplished this? How much joy do they have in their heart? Now, you, I want you visualizing where you are at and what it's going to feel like to accomplish this one goal. If you don't quit, if you don't give up, how's it going to feel When you are able to share this success, how is it going to feel when you are able to celebrate your success? And now we're going to claim your victory. Write your victory statement. Your victory statement is going to say, I have accomplished blank. So if it is a program you're working on, if it is launching a business, if it is writing a book, if it is starting a podcast, whatever it is, whatever your goal is, I have accomplished X, Y, Z in the blank. And then whatever that goal is that you are working to accomplish, I want you to look at life on the other side of accomplishing that goal. Not the same as standing in that moment in that moment of accomplishment that we talked about in step five. But I want you to imagine what life looks like on the other side of that because just because we haven't experienced it before, just because it's not familiar or comfortable to us does not mean that we cannot visualize what it looks like on the other side. How would your life be different if you accomplished this? What does your life look like after achieving that victory? That one thing, maybe it's the fact that you have have chosen a healthier diet plan. Maybe it's the fact that you have committed to growing deeper in your walk with God. Whatever that one thing is that you're wanting to accomplish, look at what it looks like on the other side, standing in your victory. What does your actual life look like? You can write it down if you want. But the next and final piece to moving from the four Fs and into claiming our victory is that I want you to write a letter to yourself. I'm going to attach this in the show notes and we will have a a workbook that you can download if you would like. You're going to write a letter to yourself and it's going to say, Dear Self, I want you to know that you are, and you're going to fill in the blanks, that say whatever it is that is a power statement that makes you feel successful. It can be, a child of God, fearfully and wonderfully made, resilient, persistent, forgiven, redeemed, worthy. Whatever is a strength and and characteristics that show that you are that you are capable of success, that you are capable of moving from failure to success. The second stage of this letter is going to be this is going to be your statement of triumph. Whatever you have overcome in your past, you have overcome addiction, survived abuse or trauma, saved a bankrupt business, uh, helped build a successful, thriving family, whatever your statement of triumph is, some point that you've overcome something. Maybe you've navigated a blended family. Maybe you have achieved some sort of personal accomplishment. That's where we're going to put that in there that shows our overcoming strengths and characteristics that we have there for our statement of triumph. The next is going to be that you possess all the blank, the knowledge, the talent, the gifts, the skills, whatever that is. So you possess all of the 
strength, the tenacity, the persistence, the grit, the determination, whatever that is that you want to put in there to accomplish this goal. And then the next piece of this letter, you're going to say you are committed to putting in the work and taking the action steps necessary to completing this goal because the success that lies on the other side of this challenge is worth every step of the journey. At the bottom of this letter, we're going to say from now on, anytime I feel like giving up on a goal or turning back to a cycle of failure because the fear of success is too great, I promise to go back and read this letter to myself. I promise to constantly seek success and not fear the unknown, but rather embrace the plans that God has for me. Love, your successful self standing on this side of victory. You guys, I believe in each and every one of you, and I know that you can break that cycle of failure. I know that you can overcome your familiarity and your comfort on that side. I know that you can own your success and stand in your success and claim your victory. You just have to do it. You just have to step out of your comfort zone and do it. I can't wait to see how you guys succeed from here on out. Send me a DM. Let me know. I wrote a book, you guys, and I would love to have you be part of the official launch team. Head over to the-powerproject.com, sign up for the newsletter, and I will make sure that you are one of the very first to get your hands on this book. If you enjoyed what you heard in today's show, can I ask that you go write a review, give us a rating, we'll take five stars, and tell all your friends. I can't wait to chat with you next week, but until then, live your best purpose-filled lives.